take two, will we try that again? <laughs> Thank you, choir, for doing that again. Thank you very much. Uh, welcome. Welcome everybody here sitting in the sanctuary and in the cafe church um, watching the, the service on the screen with a cup of tea in front of them. And everybody at home who are watching us probably with their slippers on watching it. <laughs> so, so, so it's, all, it's all good. We're watching it all over the place. And I do hope that we feel God's presence with us as we listen, sing and worship and pray. You've maybe noticed that we've got even more angels around the church this morning. I think they're breeding actually, they're, they're coming in everywhere. Um, and I can thank everyone who has taken the time to, to knit these angels for us. They're, they're all very similar, um, but actually all quite different as well. A bit like us, a bit individual and unique. And there are still more to be added, so watch this space. And can I also thank Kate Strachan of, on your behalf for all the hard work she's done in decorating the hall. And I believe there's a wee bit more to come to that one as well. Um, and we have something sort of bubbling in the background for the Cafe Church on the 22nd of December. So keep that one in your, in your diary. I know that those of you who watch from home um, can't see our lovely windows all around the church, um, or our cafe church, in fact. So what we'll do when everything is in place over the next few weeks, we'll take some photographs and then we can put them online so that people at home can see them as well. Um, we've got some dates for your diary again, just to remind you that next Sunday our children's church will join us for a wee while. We're still small in number, but we're huge in enthusiasm. As I said before, we've got a prayer they want to teach us, um, and they want to show us how they tell and listen and watch to the Lord's Prayer. Advent Book Review Group is meeting this Tuesday at 2.30, till around about half past three in the Children's Church, and I'm certainly looking forward to that on Tuesday. Christmas services this year will be a watch night service at 11.30, that's Sunday the 24th of December, and 11 o'clock service on Sunday the 26th, followed by mulled wine and a mini mince pie. So if you weren't coming then, maybe you'll come now. <laughs> <laughs> it's a wee totally wee mince pie, so don't get too excited. Uh, training and refresher train or refresher training has been arranged here in Canvas Neth and North for both existing elders and elders who are just about to be ordained. And that's this Thursday at seven o'clock. Please, if you're intending to come, you need to either let me or Tom know that you're going to come for obvious reasons because we need to make sure we've got enough room to fit everybody in. The prayer group are continuing to meet, I think, maybe back online. <clears throat> and if you have anything that you want them to, to pray about, please let your elder or myself know. Now, I wonder what we've got in the box today. Let's have a look. I know this is the part that you always look forward to, it's a story or what's in the box. Oh. I have an angel. Yeah, another one. You see? I have a piece of a jigsaw. I have a book of babies' names. 4,001 of them. Oh, what else have I got? I have a box, a wee heart shaped box. Oh, something inside. I wonder what this could be. It's not a lipstick, no. A wine cork, somebody says no. That's 
a light that was hiding inside the box. Well, that's us set the scene for the service today. Telling you no more than that for now. <laughs> Can I ask who the, our beadle today to light our second Advent candle? That we call love. The second Sunday we light, also called the Bethlehem candle. And as we do, let us think of the great love that was born in Bethlehem. Thank you, Scott. Please join me in our call to worship this morning. A baptism of life change in the 15th year of the rule of Caesar Tiberius. It was while Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea. When John, Zechariah's son, out of the desert at the time, received a message from God. He went all through the country around the Jordan River, preaching a baptism of life change, leading to forgiveness of sins, as described in the words of Isaiah the prophet. Thunder in the desert, prepare God's arrival. Make the road smooth and straight. Every ditch will be filled in, every bump smoothed out, the detours straightened out, all the ruts paved over. Everyone will be there to see the parade of God's salvation. Let's worship now. We sing our first hymn, Christ is our light, the bright and morning star. Let us pray. Blessed are you, Lord God, for you have looked favorably on all of your children, and you have redeemed them. You raised up for us a mighty one from the house of David, one who would bring salvation and peace. May we join in the prophetic words spoken across generations that inspire us with hope. That from amongst us in your very image are being raised up those who will speak truth, who will serve without fear, those who even today, like John long before, are preparing the way of the Lord, seeking to build a kingdom that shines light in the darkness, breaking the dawn upon us, and guiding us all 
in the way of peace. In a time of Advent expectation, let us draw on the inspiration of these stories. God of peace, may we lift up our own praise of all that you have done, all that you are doing, and all that you has yet to do. May we join with you in the great adventure while things that seem devoid of life are filled with new hope. Those situations that seem irretrievably divided are filled with new peace. When we find ourselves silenced, unable to speak up, may we remember Zechariah and know that a time will come when we can bear witness to your love. Forgive us for not making the most of those times, for ignoring the opportunities to speak out or failing to be the loving and peaceful people to which we are called. May we know that by your great mercy, we are free to serve you. We are free to join our voices together and repeat your prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. They, we have lots of special things going on today. Obviously, we've got communion, but we've got recognition of three elders of long, with long service. Can I ask Tom to come forward, please? Um, this morning, uh, we want to mark the long service to the session and to the congregation for three of the session members. Um, the, we, we have long service certificates signed by the current moderator, and I'd like to ask each person to come forward and receive that. The first is uh, Hugh Dixon, who two weeks ago, I think, celebrated 50 years service to the session. Um, second person is Scott Forbes. Um, Scott, today actually will be 40 years in the session. Well done, Scott. Now, the the last person is Jim Martin. Um, Jim, like you, is 50 years, two weeks ago, service to the session. Unfortunately, Jim's not feeling too well today and isn't with us. But we'll ask Nancy, his wife, to come forward and take the certificate. me say, isn't that just amazing? All those years that they've given to the Church of Scotland. I thought Tom had something else to say there. Um, we have our readings this morning from the Old Testament and the New Testament.
The Old Testament reading is taken from Malachi chapter 3, verses 1 to 4. The Lord Almighty answers, I will send my messenger to prepare the way for me. Then the Lord you are looking for will suddenly come to his temple. The messenger you long to see will come and proclaim my covenant. But who will be able to endure the day when he comes? Who will be able to survive when he appears? He will be like strong soap, like a fire that refines metal. He will come to judge like one who refines and purifies silver. As a metal worker refines silver and gold, so the Lord's messenger will purify the priests so that they will bring to the Lord the right kind of offerings. Then the offerings which the people of Judah and Jerusalem bring to the Lord will be pleasing to him as they used to be in the past. Before the New Testament reading, I want to give you a wee preamble of the, the scripture reading we've got this morning. It comes with the congregation was gathered and praying outside the temple. An angel of God appeared. Zechariah was terrified. But the angel reassured him, saying, your prayer has been heard. Elizabeth, your wife, will bear a son by you. You are to name him John. He will be the messenger of God's arrival. Zechariah said to the angel, do you expect me to believe this? I'm an old man and my wife is an old woman. The angel said, I am Gabriel, Gabriel sent especially to bring you this glad news. So because you won't believe me, you'll be unable to say a word until the day of your son's birth. Every word I've spoken to you will come true in time, God's time. And he couldn't speak until his son was named. Thank you. This is Zechariah's prophecy. And this reading is from Luke chapter 1, verse 68 to 79. Let us praise the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to the help of his people and has set them free. He has provided for us a mighty saviour, a descendant of his servant David. He promised through his holy prophets long ago that he would save us from our enemies, from the power of all those who hate us. He said he would show mercy to our ancestors and remember his sacred covenant. With a solemn oath to our ancestor Abraham, he promised to rescue us from our enemies and allow us to serve him without fear, so that we might be holy and righteous before him all the days of our life. You, my child, will be called a prophet of the Most High God. You will go ahead of the Lord to prepare his road for him, to tell his people that they will be saved by having their sins forgiven. Our God is merciful and tender. He will cause the bright dawn of salvation to rise on us and to shine from heaven on all those who live in the dark shadow of death to guide our steps into the path of peace. Amen and thanks be to God. And may God add his blessing to that reading from his word. Let's worship God again now, singing our next hymn, Tell Out My Soul the Greatness of the Lord.
May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be pleasing in your sight, our Lord. Amen. What's in a name? Once again, this morning, I've taken a few things out of the box, and I've probably left you wondering why. What's the purpose of this? A light or a hidden light, a book of baby names, and a piece of a jigsaw, and an angel. Four things. The first one, the angel, of course, this represents the angel Gabriel, who appeared several times in our readings, in all of our readings at this time of year. But who is Gabriel? Each time Gabriel appears in the Bible, it's as the role of a messenger. He's not really a cute little messenger boy, though, because when Gabriel appeared to Dave, Daniel, Zechariah, and of course Mary, all three were stricken with a mixture of fear and respect. He had to reassure each of them before he was able to deliver his message raising Daniel back to his feet, telling Zechariah and Mary not to be afraid. Gabriel's just one of two angels that are actually named in our tradition. The other one is Michael. But why did I bring the book of baby names? I've got to wonder, what, who decided what your name would be? I don't know if you even know that. Was it your mum or your dad? Someone else in the family? Maybe it's a name, a tradition handed down through the years after a parent or a grandparent or an aunt or an uncle. None of that for me. I was named after the author of a book my mother was reading during her pregnancy. No idea what this book was. She liked the name of the author and the life that the main character of the book was living. I wonder if I've lived up to that expectation, I really don't know. Is your name a special name? What I mean by that is, does it have a meaning or is it just chosen because it sounded nice to your parents? It really doesn't matter, I guess. I didn't like my name as a child anyway. You see, I was the only Beverly in the whole school. I would have preferred to have a name that someone else had, that some of the other girls in the school had. But as the years have gone on, I've kind of grown to, to like it a lot better. Do you like your name? You see, we're not defined by our name. It's not who we really are, is it? It's a means to identify us in some way. A tag given to us, if you like. Like Big David or Wee David. And of course, looking at our Christian name here, and along with our surname and the date and the place and the time of our birth, that's where it's recorded, that's what it's recorded, and it identifies us as that person. Now, maybe we're very proud of our family name, and I know I personally am. I'm proud to be part of the family of my parents' family and my own family, who incidentally now all have different surnames. But each one of us can be traced back in time through the generations. And of course, we're all also known by another name as well, aren't we? We have another name. We're all part of a bigger family, a worldwide family of people who identify themselves as Christian. And this family has the same father. How amazing is that? Brothers and sisters, not just in our church here, or even just in our denomination. Millions of us, Christian by name. Let's get back to our gospel passage this morning. We're looking at Zechariah. Zechariah, the father of John the Baptist. Here he is, both he and his wife Elizabeth have had a son. 
And that in itself is a miracle because they were both pretty old. But this son was, as all babies are, a gift from God. Even if we haven't actually given birth to them, they're a gift from God. This baby was born for a particular purpose. And Zechariah was speaking to his son in our reading this morning. And you, child, will be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord and prepare his ways to give knowledge of salvation to his people for the forgiveness of their sins. This baby named by God as John grew into a man, and we know that. But he wasn't given a family name, he was given a different name and was tasked to prepare the way for someone far more important and more significant. As he wandered through the wilderness around Judea, wearing camel skins and eating nothing but locusts and honey, he told the people that someone was coming who would free them from their struggles. According to John, someone was coming who had been spoken about for hundreds of years before by the prophets of Israel. And when he arrived, everything was going to change. John was preparing the ground, delivering the message. Turn back to God and believe his good news about his coming kingdom and how to be part of it. During Advent, we are getting ready to celebrate the birth of Jesus, God with us. We are preparing ourselves to discover again just what this baby means to us. The hidden light from our reading. The hidden light, why did I bring that out of the box? From a reading this morning, by the tender mercy of our God, the dawn from a high will break upon us to give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death to guide our feet into the way of peace. Often we fear what we cannot see, don't we? And we need a way to find, a way to see things clearly, to find that way or what I should say is to see things clearer. Maybe we're afraid to truly follow where God leads because we can't see where we're going. But God in Christ has brought light into our world to illuminate our path and show us the way so that we can follow and serve without fear. Why a piece of a jigsaw? Why did I bring that this morning? Ever since the beginning of time, God has chosen, has been working on his plan, fitting all the pieces together. Everything was dark, then there was light, day and night, sun and moon, land and sea, creatures and so on and on and on, the dawn of creation. Years, decades, centuries have passed. Humankind has discovered and learned many things. But we can only get a glimpse of God's plan. Read in our Bible how his plan has developed. But we should note here that God remains the same. His plan, his purpose will be fulfilled. So today's reading about Zechariah and his son John is just a tiny part of the much, much bigger picture. Let us pray. Lord God, you know me inside and out. Help us to live our way, your way, to live with purpose, to see my brothers and sisters as you see them, and to help others as you would help them, and to live into and up to the name Christian, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's worship again by standing on our feet if we're able, and we'll sing for everyone born a place at the table.
we still can't hand round plates to one another as we celebrate communion. So as we did in June and again in September, we will use the bread and the grape that you collected on your way in this morning. And here is a reminder of why we're using this particular method. In North Korea and possibly other countries as well, where Christians are forced to worship in secret, because if they're caught, they will be persecuted. So when they want to celebrate communion, they go out into the street at an agreed time. They make eye contact with one another, another Christian, obviously. And as they take a piece of bread and a single grape from their pocket and eat it. So making sure that they are sharing the Lord's Supper together whilst not attracting attention. Now, we don't have to celebrate communion in secret. We're not afraid to draw attention to ourselves, or we shouldn't be, thankfully. But we do have to keep ourselves safe, safe in this virus that's going around. So we will continue this way until it's safe to do otherwise. So can I ask the congregation, please, to stand if you're able, and we'll celebrate this sacrament and share together our statement of faith as we recite the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. As we gather round either this communion table together or your table at home, let us hear the earliest account of the institution as it was given to us by the Apostle Paul. Paul wrote, For I received from the Lord the teaching that I pass on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took a piece of bread, gave thanks to God, broke it, and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in memory of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup and said, This cup is the new, my new covenant, is God's new covenant, sealed with my blood. Whenever you drink it, do so in memory of me. This means that every time you eat this bread and drink from this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. But Paul goes on to give us this warning. So then you should all examine yourselves first and then eat the bread and drink from the cup. The benefit is great if we come with a heart seeking forgiveness and an act of faith to receive this sacrament. (coughs) So the danger is great if we do not examine ourselves. We come to the table not because we are strong, but because we are weak. We come to the table not because of any good thing we have done, that gives us the right to be here to share this feast. We come because we need mercy, forgiveness, and help. We come because the love of the Lord is for all. It is here for everyone. Everyone who recognizes that he loves you and me, and he gave himself for you and me. This is the Lord's table and is open for all. In the name of the Father, 
the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And just as the Lord Jesus on the night he was betrayed, he took bread. And I take these elements of bread and wine or grape to represent the wine either here in your home, here in the sanctuary or in your home. I ask that they be set apart of all common uses for this holy use and mystery. And as Jesus gave thanks and blessed God the Father, let us also give thanks. Let us pray. Loving and comforting God, we gather together this day in an unfamiliar way in our times that are becoming more familiar to us. We long to be sitting within touching distance of each other and to serve each other. Lord, let us remind ourselves this day, this day that although we may not be within touching distance and we may not pass a plate between us, we are together as a church, your church, in communion wherever we may be and however we celebrate. Let us feel your presence in our time together as we join in this sacred meal sitting physically apart, but together in our hearts and minds. We give you our thanks that we are able and we can share this way. Amen. Before we continue with our sacrament, let's sing our next hymn, Love Divine or Love Excelling. <laughs>
prompting to the institution command an example of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the same night he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he gave thanks, he broke it. And said, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup. This cup is the new covenant sealed by my blood. Whenever you drink it, do it in memory of me. Draw near with faith the body of Christ given for you and the blood which was shed for you. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are those who find refuge in him. If you're with someone in your own household, this is your opportunity to wish peace to one another. As we can't shake hands, give those around you sitting a sign which will be a simplified version of the sign language, peace be with you. If you remember how it is, it's peace be with you. So it's peace be with you. Peace. Let us take a few moments now of silence to reflect on what we have just received. (coughs) Thanks be to God. Amen. Choir are going to sing for us now. It was on a starry night.
Angel voices indeed. Thank you very much. Let us pray. God of peace, even if as the world still holds its breath, unsure of what the future might bring, may we, may we know both your assurance and your expectation that in your way we can have faith and hope. And so we dedicate ourselves once more into that way, committing ourselves as the body of Christ to live into that vision of your purpose for the sake of your kingdom. Use us to benefit that vision, our time and our energy, our skills and our resources, all in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord God, we thank you for the, the ministries of those who have gone before us, remembering the great heroes of faith like John, Elizabeth, and Zechariah's boy, for all the expectation and hope placed on his young shoulders, preparing the way for the one to follow, the cost of which could be and is indeed would be so high we witness with some trepidation. Do we overburden our young with expectations and hopes that may burn them out before they're able to stand, withstand the pressures and the stresses? We pray for our young people, particularly at this time of great pressure, for climate change to social media, from reduced opportunities abroad to rising costs, that they might be able to maintain hope and a sense of peace about their futures. We give thanks for all the servants of Christ who have given themselves to build communities of faithful witness in our cities, <clears throat> towns, and villages. May we in turn build upon that work finding new ways relevant to our own communities that bring hope and peace, good news and grace. In communities where hope seems removed, where peace is a twisted joke, where future dreams focus more on survival, where women's rights and educations are removed, where violence is unchecked, where corruption is rampant. We pray for people to stand firm. We pray for resilience and courage for those seeking to bring restoration and healing, for agencies seeking to bring honesty and truth, and for people like us, ordinary folk, to find the courage to speak out, naming what we see taking place. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our final hymn this morning, To God be the glory, great things he has done.
Out of fear and into hope, God has called us. Out of darkness into light, God has called us. Out of confusion and into peace, God has called us. Today and tomorrow, we walk with God. And the blessing of God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit guard you and those you love. Today, tomorrow, and forevermore. Amen. Thank you.